Welcome everyone to the Patreon Leader Institute. I'm Gil Fried, crowd management doctor. It's great to see you. Hopefully you've been watching a lot of these videos and hopefully you're not sick of me by this point. I, I hope my own students do get sick of me as well, so I don't blame you. But the whole idea is not me. It's about you and learning. So we're taking a look at module 15, medical issues. And there are gonna be various medical issues that can impact patrons. Uh, they also can impact you. So you need to be aware that you could be called upon to provide or analyze basic first aid concerns from whether it's heart attacks, food allergies, overdoses, and other medical conditions to how to apply or use whether it's CPR, AEDs, the Heimlich maneuver, whatever it might mean. We're not trying to turn you into a medical professional. We're just trying to make sure that you understand what's going on and that you appreciate that there could be medical issues and that you have to respond quickly. So what are some of the key terms covered in this module? AED, and AED is an Automated External Defibrillator, or AED, by short, that's what most people use. It is a portable electric device that diagnoses cardiac arrhythmias or ventricular fibrillation in a patron and is able to treat them through defibrillation. It's the application of electrical therapy which stops the arrhythmia allowing the heart to reestablish an effective rhythm. The next term is bloodborne pathogen. That relates to diseases that can be carried with the blood, even dried blood. The next term is hyperthermia. This is the result of the body being exposed to excessive heat. In contrast, the next term is hypothermia. This is the result of the body being exposed to excessive cold temperature. Ooh, what are some of the medical issues that could be faced? There's quite a few. Abdominal pains, whether it's from food, whether it's from uh, somebody's period, from whatever it might be. Abrasions, alcohol abuse or intoxication, allergic reaction, whether it's food, insects, whatever it might be. Asthma attacks, back pains, burns, cardiac arrest, choking. I mean, you, you should see how many people choke on hot dogs. It is incredible, the number concussions and head injuries, cuts, abrasions, dehydrations, diarrhea, dizziness, drug overdoses, electrical shocks, fever, flu symptoms, food poisoning, fractures, frostbite. We're going from A to Z here, so you're gonna get a, a nice lengthy list here. Gastritis, headaches, heat exhaustion, heat stroke, insect bites, menstrual issues, seizures, splinters, sunburn, trauma, vomiting. That, that's a significant list. We don't know why someone's getting sick necessarily. We don't know why they're acting a given way, but it might put us on notice that, hey, there's a medical emergency going on here. So let's start off with what do we do? What's our basic response? So that's the first primary area that we're gonna be taking a look at in this module. The goal is to identify when basic first aid should be provided and by whom. And so I understand we're not medical doctors. We might be reluctant to get involved, but if we see somebody bleeding, are we just gonna look at them and we're like, eh, that's tough being you, sorry and then walk away? No. We have to figure out what is the appropriate response and how to do it. If a patron indicates that they do not need any assistance, what should you do? Still, you should monitor them and document that they do not need assistance. If their condition changes, step in immediately. A lot of people are like, I don't want to cause anything, and they're having a medical emergency. You've got to make sure you, be able, you can respond. The first aid protocols might include various stages such as, let's go through like initial triage. That's an evaluation process. So level one, it's treat and release. You can go back to the vent or their seat. It requires minimal treatment of less than maybe five minutes, like removing a splinter from somebody or an ice pack because it got hit by a foul ball, but it wasn't serious. Level two is receive on-site assistance for more complicated issues that can be handled internally. And that could take more than five minutes but they're often released, you could go home or something like that. Level three refers to transport the victim with an ambulance to a hospital. It's for more significant care. 
So when can you face dehydration? We're going to go through some examples. Maybe in hot sun or in a mosh pit. If you have no access to fluid, that can help hurt you. When can you face hypothermia? When the body is exposed to excessive cold, like winter and you're cold. What should you do when you see a patient suffering from a heat-based condition? Maybe call for medical assistance. Move the patron to a cool spot. Remove any heavy or hot clothing from the patron. You know, those are just some examples of issues that are medical related and how to respond. How should you deal with blood? Never handle blood without proper equipment. Every venue, every event should have several blood spill kits. And that's to help clean up blood, and so, but also to protect yourself while you're handling blood. When faced with a possible medical condition, you should look for the following possible signs when evaluating a patron. Aggressiveness, alcohol on the breath, argumentative, maybe belligerent, maybe bloodshot eyes, maybe fainting, maybe falling, falling asleep, you know, kind of thing, flushed eyes, glassy eyes, hostility, impaired attention, uh, uh, uh. irritability, loss of balance, lack of judgment, loss of coordination, loss of inhibition, overly talkative and flirtatious, maybe problems walking, talking, even standing, maybe quick mood changes, maybe slowed reaction time. How about slurred speech? spilling food and drinks, stumbling around, swearing uncontrollably, tripping, uncontrolled raising and lowering of one's voice, unstable walking, standing even, walking away from a stand without their full order or their change or whatever it might be. These are all examples. Could there be something? It could be someone is forgetful or it could be a medical issue. Maybe they have Parkinson's or maybe they have Alzheimer's or something else where they don't have the same memory or they could just be getting old or inattentive. We don't know, but these are signs that you want to take a look for because they could help you possibly going forward. Always follow up with a patron. Even if they say they're fine, I'm fine, don't worry. Always document every medical or first aid issue, no matter what. Let's go to the second part of this module, which is first aid strategies. Remember, I'm not trying to make you into a doctor, but I'm trying to give you strategies on how to be able to respond. So the goal here is to understand you are not a doctor. Even if you step at a Holiday Inn Express and you feel like, hey, look it, I could do anything, you're not a doctor. And involve the appropriate parties as quickly as possible. If you don't know what to do and it looks serious, call command, call 911. Always try to get medical assistance from professionals. If that is delayed for any reason, the following strategies could be followed. You know, so if while you're waiting for someone to come from the command center, control bleeding. You or the patron themselves should apply pressure with your hands or a cold compress, toweling, whatever is available. Sign of a potential heart attack might require immediate attention as well. They include persistent pain in the chest, which might radiate to the left arm, jaw, or shoulders. Feeling very weak, faint, losing consciousness, vomiting, sweating, and being short of breath. With these signs, call 911 and your supervisor. Call immediately, command center or supervisor, whichever is the policy for your facility. With a choking vis vi victim, you know, someone who's suffering from choking, perform the Heimlich maneuver if the patron cannot speak or breathe. If they're coughing, don't do that. If the patron starts uh, uh, to talk, you should never perform the Heimlich maneuver. You should check a patron's breathing and make sure they are able to breathe and that the blockage was not attributable to a food item, but a closing of the throat based upon another medical condition, because then it's not necessarily the Heimlich maneuver at that point. If you come across a patron who has fainted, you should lie them down and ensure they are not restricted by tight clothing or anything else. Most fainting victims wake after around two minutes if they are lying down. So make sure they're not seated, they're lying down. Do not move someone with a protruding bone. 
If they have severe pain or a deformity that can uh, indicate a fracture, don't move them. This is especially critical if it looks like their neck has been uh, injured or the back has been injured. How would you respond to a bee sting? Hmm. Always ask if the patron has any allergies. Next, you as the patron leader should apply ice after scraping out the stinger if they can't do it themselves. Always ask them if they could do it. If they ask you, can you help me, then maybe you can do that. But look at the policy of your venue because a lot of venues will not allow you to touch anyone. And one of the secrets, and I'm just going to give you a little uh, hint here, is that if you have a bee sting or any other sting, the best way that I have heard to remove it is actually taking a credit card and trying to scrape against it as a way to push it away because if it's stuck with a sack from whatever stung you, that could actually inject uh, the, the, the venom or whatever it is into you and that's why you don't want to do that. All right, so moving away from bee stings and stuff like that, let's go to first aid equipment. That's the third part of this module. So the goal here is identify several first aid items you should know about in the facility. What are we talking about? You yourself are going to be a great piece of first aid equipment because what you see is going to be important. So let's take a look at some other ones. An AED. You should know in your facility where the AED is located. The application of electrical therapy which stops the arrhythmia in your heart will help restart the heart or return it to a normal beat. So it's important to know where the AED is, make sure it's completely charged and that it's in good shape. Uh, an anaphylactic shock injector is used for responding to an allergic reaction. And it's something that you can stab into someone's leg or wherever it is that they do it. Uh, oftentimes people will do it on, on themselves because they've been trained that way. But also we want to understand other equipment as well. You might have backboards, you might have band-aids, you might have gloves, you might have ice, you might have splints or slings. Whatever is available at your facility, you should make sure you understand that. And part of that is asking. See where there is like a first aid kit with band-aids and stuff like that. There might be one right next to your area that you're assigned. That's great, but it's important to know it. It's important to know where the AED is. I had a situation where uh, at a venue someone was training for a sport and they end up having a heart attack and in the heat of the moment I did not remember where the AED was so I was running all around trying to find the AED to help out. Luckily we were able to find it, we were able to uh, provide uh, the, the jolts. Uh, it required three jolts to get the guy with a somewhat heartbeat back and then they had to jolt him again in the ambulance. So if at first you don't succeed, don't give up, keep trying. Uh, there are some good Samaritan laws that are out there and it's important to understand that normally you're not going to be held responsible for what happens if you provide life-saving care. But remember, you're not a doctor. You can't save people. That, that's not your role, that's not your responsibility. What you can do is report a medical condition to others comfort someone while you're waiting for care. If there is something that is very simple, like they are requesting a Band-Aid, you could contact the medical team and they could come out and provide assistance if need be. If it is a very serious issue, that's when 911 and calling the command center is so critical. Medical conditions are going to happen. Um, you can't stop it. What you can do is be vigilant that if you see something that looks out of place, approach someone and say, look at, are you okay? Are you, are you having any issues right now that are impacting you and your ability to enjoy the event or the game or whatever it might be? Just knowing that someone is monitoring them will sometimes help people feel better. But you'll know sometimes when someone has collapsed or they fainted or they're having a heart attack and you'll see the sweating or if it's hypothermia or hydrothermia or whatever kind of thermia they might be having, you know, that you can often see that if someone has those glassy eyes and stuff like that, if someone is shivering and they can't control themselves, if someone is vomiting, we might not know what the reason is and you're not a doctor to prescribe them 
but if you notice and see something, respond accordingly. And, you know, that's, that's all you could do. You're not a doctor. And so that's the best advice I could give you is that monitor your area, feel comfortable with what are medical rules and regulations and policies for the venue, and make sure you can follow up and have access to individuals or to a communication device or whatever it is to be able to call in if there is in fact an emergency. Time is of the essence when there's a medical issue. So it's not just, okay, I'm gonna take a look and see what happens for the person in the next half hour. No, you have to act quickly. And no one's gonna be upset if you call in and say, look, I think there's a medical emergency. So let's be safe out there. As I said at the very beginning, you can also suffer a medical condition. And don't hesitate to contact people if you are suffering a medical condition and say, hey, look at, I need attention. And no one's ever gonna fault you for that if you're asking, in fact, for your own medical care or for a colleague as well as for patrons. Take care, I hope you learned a lot about medical issues and we'll talk at a later time. Bye-bye.